If you want, it's Emily Fox. Am I going through puberty? If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a book tag video. I'm gonna be doing the book addiction book tag, which is definitely not something we all suffer from. I will link down below the original video and I have a few questions to go through and I totally want your answers, by the way, about some of these because I'm really curious to hear. I'm nosy, I wanna know. Question number one, what is the longest amount of time you can comfortably go without picking up a book? If we are talking before booktube, like in school and stuff, I feel like months, because I had so much reading to do. But for fun now, probably only like a week or two. And even that, that's probably just physical books because I'll, I've, I will always have an audiobook on the go. So probably not that long, but physical books, probably a week or two. I feel like I never, never read because I'm always in the middle of so many books. Like right now I'm reading uh, The Sword of Kaijin and I feel slumpy-ish because of the weather. It's been like super sunny. It was like summery weather and then it snowed. Hence me wearing a sweater, which I'm so resentful for. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be last time for this season, but still, <laughs> I want the snow to be gone and I've been feeling kind of uh, about it. So it's been a few, days of reading just a few pages, not nothing, but like not fast enough. And the book is great, it's not the issue, it's a me thing. But yeah, not that long, probably like a week. Number two, how many books do you carry on your person, physical or device at any given time? Well, device, my phone is charging right now, but I always have my app, Luby. Definitely recommend getting it. It's better, I feel like, than Overdrive. So I always have eBooks and audiobooks from my library on there. So I probably have like one or two at least with that, and then I do have my Kindle app too, so there's every book I own there, which isn't that much. I probably only have like between, I don't know, like 20 and 40 books on there, which I guess is still a decent amount. But yeah, I don't really bring physical books anywhere. Well, I'm not going anywhere anymore, but the only times lately I have been, in the last couple of years, I've had uh, a physical book with me. It's usually to go to a park or the beach or something to read, so I now, solely use audiobooks and ebooks whenever I'm on the go. Number three, do you keep every book you buy, receive, or are you happy to pass them on to make space for more? Uh, a mix of both. I do own an excessive amount, which we're gonna talk in a second, but I do an unhaul video every June, I feel like. I did it three years in a row, so I'm making it officially a thing. So in June, you have that to look forward to. I'm gonna be doing an unhaul video, which I feel like I'm overdue. I do have a few books that I want to get rid of. Usually I'm pretty good at only get rid of books that I have read and either I don't really care for it, I feel like someone else would enjoy it more, you know, just making space too. Except last year I did get rid of a couple that were like the next up in a series that I wasn't going to complete, which is also totally valid to get rid of. So yeah, making space for sure, but at the same time I do collect books. Number four, how long would you spend in a bookshop on a standard visit? A normal bookshop, I feel like I just go in to get whatever I was looking for and come out. But if we're talking used bookstore or um, library bookseller or something, I would say 30 minutes to an hour. Cause like you have to browse there. Like you don't know what's there. And that's part of the fun. I miss it so much. <laughs> Just talking about it. I haven't done a haul video in forever. So as soon as I get to vaccine and safe to go and everything, uh, probably this fall. Hopefully, I live in Canada, we're so late for vaccine, but um, I will do haul videos. We can all like rejoice in advance, very excited for it. But yes, probably 30 minutes, an hour, depending. I feel like my bangs never recovered from being bangs and they're always in my face. Number five, how much time per day do you actually spend reading? That is such a good question. I feel like if we're counting audiobooks, there would be the time where in the morning I'm getting ready um, and at night, when I'm getting and ready. So that's probably like half an hour to an hour every day just with audiobooks. And I used to be in the habit of like hitting up with my coffee and going on a walk to listen to audiobooks and just relax, which was very healthy, you know, coping mechanism. But I haven't done that in forever because winter, Canada. But maybe I should get into the habit of doing this this summer again. But if we're just talking like physical books or eBooks, I usually probably spend about 30 minutes an hour every night. Some nights I don't, let's just say it. And some days during the weekend, I will spend a couple hours, especially if I'm doing like a vlog or something, but about an hour a day of physical book and about an hour of audiobook. That sounds like a lot, but I mean, yeah, about that. But sometimes it's zero. It's important to say it. Number six, where does the task picking up a book appear on your daily to-do list? Usually before bed, usually before bed. 
I feel like I used to do it during the lunch break sometimes at work or like at school in between classes. Ugh, no, that would be a lie. I feel like I wasn't reading for fun, like literally ever. Yeah, usually before bed. It just helps me to relax. Plus I'm the kind of person that like, if I have something to do later that day, I can't do anything. <laughs> I stress about it all day. So I can't sit down and enjoy reading until I have done everything I was supposed to or like it's before bed. So that's when I can read a little bit before and try to relax. So yeah, it has to be before bed. Although during the weekend, sometimes again, I will have more time. So I will make more time for it. Number seven, how many books do you reckon you own in total, including eBooks? Okay, the last time I counted them, was it last year? Um, I think I had like 666, which that was not planned. It just happened that way. Uh, it didn't stay that way. I did have time to do a couple of hauls before the pandemic happened. Um, I think at this point I'm probably around 7, 750 because I did again unhaul a couple and um, I haven't bought that many since. So probably around that with the ebooks because again, I don't have that many ebooks. So that sounds like so much, but like it's about four bookshelves. Like I have four uh, Ikea Billy, Billy bookshelves. So it's like 24 shelves plus the top and it's not fully full. It's pretty full, but it's not full full. I probably have space for like a hundred more or something, but you know, um, maybe before the end of the year, we can fill that up and then I'll have like piles of books everywhere, <laughs> which I would actually be happy about. Number eight, approximately how often do you bring up books in conversation? I'm actually curious because I feel like no one around me reads like no one. So never. The only time I will mention books is like if someone wants to try and read something and then I will ask them, you know, what kind of movie, TV show, the genres you like. So I can like, I love doing that, trying to figure out something that will work for someone. But otherwise, I don't bring up books very often because nobody <laughs> can relate, which is probably why I have booktube. Like it's fun to be able to actually talk to people that do read a lot and then Goodreads and then my Instagram, Bookstagram that I'm starting. So exciting, but yeah. Not in real life. Number nine, what is the biggest book page count wise you have finished reading? Okay, I grabbed it just before. The Stand, I think, by Stephen King might be the biggest one that I have. I have this like unabridged, humongous edition. I think it's like 1300 pages or something. It's big. I thought maybe like this one would have been bigger, but no, turns out this one is like 1100 pages. The uh, Is Dark Materials trilogy. It's not the biggest one on my shelf. You might be able to see maybe like it's right underneath it's the Inheritance Trilogy, although it's a trilogy, but still, it's one book by N.K. Jemison. Eventually, I will read something that is like 15, 1800 pages. <laughs> so yeah, pretty big, but these are the biggest ones that I've read on book two for sure. I mean, we remember a couple years ago, I was scared of big books, and I feel like I got rid of that. I'm doing fine now. Number 10, is there a book you had to get your hands on against all odds, like searching limited edition and stuff? I don't know. I don't care about like signed edition or like specific. Okay, that's not true. I feel like with booktube, I've become more into having certain editions because some of them are not very cute, but because I buy used books, I usually don't care if I find one that isn't the pretty edition, I will still get it because they're usually like really affordable. But I do sometimes hunt down very specific edition if I already love the book kind of thing. Like Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I got this edition, which I think is prettier. Uh, everyone seems to disagree. Whatever, to me it's pretty. But otherwise, I don't do it super often. Oh, maybe even um, Brendan Sanderson. Again, you can't. Why am I not just grabbing it? I have... There you go. Uh, the Skyward series. I love the UK edition. So I went ahead and got these ones instead. And whenever the third book comes out, I will again order it online to have, you know, continued pretty editions because I really don't like the uh, US editions. Normally I don't do that. <laughs> I'm doing it more often, but normally I don't do that. 11, is there a book you struggled to finish because you refused to DNF? I am doing this this year, my challenge to DNF more books and just be comfortable moving on because there are so many books. I own so many books. Why would I spend hours resenting the book that I'm reading? I am still going to have my pile of shame, you know, books that I put down for no reason, but I'm enjoying. So like I will finish eventually. I did finish a few books in the last couple of years that I like almost hate read <laughs> because I wanted to finish, 
The first one that comes to mind is Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. I tried the audiobook, hated the voices, so I got the ebook, could not get into it, so I got the audiobook, and then I finished it that way. And I did not like it. I liked kind of the like superpowers, but like I, I don't d no like why did I finish it? I did not enjoy anything about it pretty much like it was sheer stubbornness because I was hoping it was going to get better but like I kind of knew it wasn't going to so that one the other one that is pretty popular would be like Ninth House which I was in my defense I was hoping that once again it was going to get better and it's also something I got the ebook and then switched to the audiobook because I couldn't get into it and the last two three hours of the audiobook completely pointless absolutely pointless it was such a weird book I no no I don't know why well I do know why I finished it but like I shouldn't have I should have put it down which is why I'm changing things this year and I'm putting down books but yeah it's hard but like the more I do it the easier it is question number 12 what are some of your main book goals for this year Okay, I have a few books that I really need to read this year. Let's start with a really positive one. Um, yes, soon, soon I will continue the Stormlight Archives by Brendan Sanderson. This is the second book in the series and <laughs> this is just ridiculously big. I'm sorry, my neighbor is staring at me through my door. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I'm hoping to continue the series. I'm so excited to do so. I'm super scared because this is probably going to be my, nope. It's just a thousand, eleven hundred pages. Why does it look so much bigger? Like, why does it look so much scarier? Uh, but yes, this is definitely one of my goals for this year. I cannot wait to continue the series. The second one, I'm a little bit more nervous, but we shall read soon, very soon on the Patreon book club, The Eye of the World, because the TV show is coming out eventually. As soon as we have a date, I think it's gonna be the book that we read. But yes, I'm very intimidated, not because of the size, it's not as big, it's like only like 600 and something pages. But I'm so scared I'm not gonna love it as much as everyone else. There's just so much hype behind the series. There are like, what, like 14, 16 books? 14, I think. And like, I'm scared I'm not gonna love it, but I'm excited, but like, I, I don't know. There's just so much, so much behind it. It's been out for so many years. Everyone knows about it, everyone talks about it, and there's a TV show, so I will read it. It's definitely a goal of mine. I do also want to continue <laughs> this series, which, uh, The Wise Men's Sphere, which I did enjoy the first book more than I thought I would, and so many people told me I wasn't going to like this one, so I'm nervous. And again, it's very scary. This one doesn't look as big, once again, but it is a thousand pages. And for some reason, the paper is so heavy, like ridiculously heavy. Like it's heavier than this one. I don't know why. But yes, I'm nervous, but excited to read it. And then one that you will see soon in a TBR. Maybe, maybe I should actually put it in my TBR for May. Because I have been in such a kick for mystery thrillers, which... Who am I? I have been not into them in like two years because I feel like every time I read one, I don't like it. But I have been reading a lot more this year and I have so many on my TBR. So I think I might have to add it. Add it. Uh, if we were villains, which for some reason, I am so intrigued to read it at the moment. I feel like everyone keeps mentioning that they want the author to write more books. I think it might be her only book. But I just want to read more uh, mystery thrillers, so I thought this one would be a good challenge for me. So it's been on my shelf a little while and it needs to happen. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of mystery thrillers in the upcoming weeks. Number 13, have you ever had the privilege of converting someone into a reader? Uh, yes and no. I feel like I, like I was saying, I tend to try and figure out something people would like to read. I like to do that, but ultimately you can't force them, which sucks. But I do try to find something. Whenever someone comes up to me and tells me, okay, I haven't read a book, you know, in like five years, this is what I like. If I can, I will give them a recommendation and I will hope that they actually do read it and that they do like it if they do. And whenever that happens, I'm super happy. And if they tell me, oh, I don't really care for reading, I always try to like make, make them read things like uh, The Egg by, I always want to say Matt Hag, <laughs> um, Andy Weir. The author of The Martian, it's available online, it's what, like five, six pages, not even. So I make them read that and they're like, oh, I actually like reading. I'm like, duh, you just have to find whatever something you're into. I feel like the problem is that too many people were forced and traumatized uh, by reading the high school readings, you know, the forced ones, which aren't great usually. 
So when they realize that they can actually read whatever they want, it helps. The next question is literally my worst nightmare. I despise these kind of questions. Uh, so I'm gonna tweak it as I always do. Number 14, describe what books mean to you in five word. No, but for me, books are kind of nostalgic. Like I look back and like I grew up reading a ton. So I always get that like feel good. I always also feel very accomplished once I've read. It's fun to just distract yourself, learn new things. And it's just all of those things for me. Like I, I just would not want to not read. With that said, I want to add my own question. So in the comment section, please let me know. Is there an amount of money that would make you be okay never reading another book again? Because I like asking people these kind of questions because like what amount of money would make you be okay never reading another book? Like a million dollars? Are we talking like 10 million dollars? Are you like absolutely nothing would make me not want to pick up another book? Because like I, I could be bought. <laughs> But like same thing with like, if you could, would you like never sleep again or never eat again? I would. <laughs> so I'm curious to hear, what about you? This is gonna be it for today's video. Please let me know once again, your answers to any of the questions, including mine, because I wanna know. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you very soon for my next video. Bye.